All right, all right. Here we are, part the six. Everyone open up your book to part the six. All right. The Personal Weapons of the Imperial Guardsmen, Section 1. Our identification of the most common weaponry issued to the frontline trooper. And here's a quote from Lord Sola Macarius. There can be no bystanders of the battle for survival. Anyone who will not fight by your side is an enemy you must crush. Inspiring words. All right. The Imperial Guard is an immense fighting force, the greatest army galaxy has ever seen, and its soldiers are the bright armor of the Emperor, bringing his divine wrath to the heretics, Xenos and the traitors that hide their foulness in the dark places to carry out this holy task. We have seen how each guardsman carries with them the kit necessary to allow him to survive in the field, how he feeds and clothes himself. Now... To locate the enemy and how they are able to fill this oath of loyalty to the Emperor. In this section, the various weapons available to the Imperial Guardsmen are described, together with any parchment information regarding their usage or other facts that will no doubt be of interest to the average reader, listener, viewer, whoever you may be. In describing these armaments, this tome will limit itself to the basic operation of these weapons, leaving the understanding of these instruments of wrath to the priest of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Remember, each of these weapons is more than simply a gun, a tool to be used to kill. They are holy artifacts that fulfill the promise of existence by allowing each and every guardsman the chance to kill the enemies of mankind. Never underestimate the importance of that factor, for to do so is to forget the sacred duty of all citizens of the Imperium. The weaponry of the Imperium has largely been standardized thanks to the foresight of the Emperor and the Adeptus Mechanicus in ages past. But each world in the Imperium produces its own local variants of weapons described in this section. Other weapons are produced on forge worlds, or are produced in newly consecrated forge temples on conquered worlds. Despite the many small variations that exist in between weapons produced on different planets, it is enough for our purposes to assume that they function in a manner similar enough to be called the same. For the purposes of this tome, each of the weapon patterns discussed here shall be Cadian pattern weapons. All right, this one should be very easy for everyone to follow. The las gun, the las gun or las rifle, las fusillade, or whatever you may call it for your indigenous people, is the standard weapon of the Imperial Guard and the most popular weapon amongst a great many human forces throughout the galaxy. It fires an explosive energy blast with a similar effect to a bullet, small shell, or slug round. A las gun may not be the most effective weapon in the galaxy, but is easy to manufacture and maintain, and very reliable under the toughest battlefield conditions. The weapon is very robust and can survive even the most violent mistreatment. Those soldiers are to be reprimanded for using the weapon in any manner other than the approved by the Departamentatora manual. With the attach of a bayonet, a lasgun becomes a formidable close combat weapon of every guardsman, and they are expected to train regularly in bayonet drills. Which reminds me, I forgot which one of you actually needs to brush up on their bayonet training, but I think it might have been... Let's see, let me go through my notebook real quick on the side. Sorry for disrupting class for a split second, but we need to have this talk after class. It seems like Eldrick Madrid is the main one today. I'll be seeing you after class. <laughs> Most lads guns operate in a 19 magnahol range, as this has been proven through live fire testing to provide the optimum balance between lethality and energy efficiency. The last guns are manufactured throughout the Imperium. Most Cadian regiments favor the Cardinal short pattern last gun. 
The last gun can be fired on two settings. Single shot, full auto. Firing single shots is more accurate and provides more shots later on the line. But in some cases, for example during the assault or defensive action against a more numerous foe, full auto may be employed when marksmanship is relevant. The last gun is powered by a rechargeable power pack, but carries a residual supply, and can be recharged using its own solar converters. When in base, there will be a designated power charger, which may be used to recharge each guardsman power pack, and it is his responsibility to ensure that he keeps as full a load as possible at all times. The enemy may strike at any time, and it is every soldier's duty to be ready. The last gun is by no means the most powerful weapon in the galaxy. It deters. Should note that it is by far the most widespread. Such a thing could not happen were a poor weapon and any weapon deployed in enough numbers. Is a thing to be feared. Thus, it is the perfect weapon for the soldiers of the Imperial Guard, for mass numbers is exactly where the Guard excels. And now here's a little attachment at the bottom. The Catorli Dragoons, however, favor a longer-barreled weapon with a heavy wooden stock, since most of their firing drills place greater emphasis on engaging at distance, whereas the Salver Kim Dogs are known to favor a lighter skeleton-stocked weapon that could be more easily be fired from the hip on the move. A multitude of other Lasgun variants exist, Short handles, collapsible stocks, pistol grips, counter grips, high sights, etc. But all perform as in close to the same way as to be gathered collectively under the las gun terms. Alright, this one is for a very few of you looking at... Let's see, which one of you actually has this weapon in your kit? Hmm. If my memory does actually work for me today, it seems like Jamie Davidson actually has this one. The Long Laz. In addition to the redoubtable Laz guns, many variants, there are certain types of weapons that exhibit differences, enough to be considered separate weapons. One such weapon is the Sniper variant Laz gun, also known as the Long Laz. Such weapons are only ever issued to those guardsmen who have displayed a flair for marksmanship stealth operations, and scout movement. For such weapons are difficult to produce and require more training and intelligence to utilize properly. A long las is a modified standard battle las gun with an XC-523 strength and barrel, which is both longer and thinner than the usual model. The strength and barrel allows for increased range and greater accuracy. The rifle does not have a charge setting slider instead employing specialized ammunition known as a hot shot. A hot shot is a higher power energy clip with liquid metal batteries that fire fewer blasts. A clip or magazine, as it should be called in this book, is known for about 20 shots, sometimes 25 if you get the right one, but compensates with greater lethality index. Due to the increased power of the shot, the stress on the barrel is considerable, and due to the reluctant metal fatigue, a sniper needs to replace the barrel with greater frequency than he would a standard battle las gun. A long flash suppressor fitted to the gun muzzle ensures that the telltale flashes of his shots do not betray the sniper's position, though standard practice is to relocate after each shot. The long las variant is equal than a standard powdered las gun, which also works in the shooter's favor. Soldiers from the Jumpo Regiment frequently employ this risky method of recharging by tossing their las gun battery packs, mags, whatever you want to call them, into a fire to charge them. It is uh, not suited, but in a desperate time, calls for desperate measures, it is... Uh, Side glanced, but most times to be favorable. Power packs. Fortunately for the Imperial Guard, laser technology is reliable and easy to maintain and replaceable. 
Though the shots fired are not as powerful as the weapons of the Adeptus Astartes, they are certainly the most trustworthy. Use conversely. A laser power pack will last for about many shots, typically around a hundred and fifty, and can be recharged from standard power source by exposing its thermal cells to heat or light. In an emergency placing, it in a fire can recharge a pack, though such treatment tends to drastically shorten the usual life of the pack and increase the probability of it failing, exploding, or causing unknowable harm to you in the far future. I mean, you do want to keep your right hands, don't you? If you're right-handed, and... Well, seeing how there are some ghosts in the showers sometimes... Ah... Uh, in the shower drains. Some of you really like to keep those right hands. <clears throat> Recharging a power pack in this way regularly will eventually result in exploding and such a willful destruction at the bottom of the torn property will result in severe penalties, such as execution, being uh, branded as a heretic, and much, much more. Any worse would be thrown into the penal colonies. At any point that this has been shown, or if you see anyone else doing this, please put an end to it immediately. There are many different types of power pack uh, variants that you can choose from that may be given to you depending on your stationing, uh, your regiment, and your supplier. The standard pack, which is the DM Record E91 power pack, a5002 is the standard power pack you'll be seeing throughout the galaxy pattern variants and in most regiments. The DM Record E91 power pack B6220 is a different variant which resembles a slug thrower's banana clip, or mag in this case. It has a little bit more energy power cells inside of it, meaning that it actually has double the usual amount of shots that a standard one will have. About 200 to 300, depending. And then the hot shot power pack is the DM Record E91 Power Pack E7002. This one is a shortened variation which is the same amount of charge as the standard one, but instead of well, having 150, it only has 25, because these are the power pack sales that were mentioned previously for the long LAS. LAS pistol, the last of the LAS guns that we'll be talking about for today. The LAS pistol is a similar version of the long LAS, LAS gun, and other laser gun variants. It is a small and easy to hold and holster tactical variant of all of them combined into one easy to maintain and for the convenience shooting. It is issued as a standard sidearm of Piro Guard and fires distinct bursts of energy, which like those of the Lasgun explode when they hit their target. Because the laser's energy is rapidly dispersed into the atmosphere, the lethal range of the LAS pistol is nowhere near as great as that as a LAS gun. LAS pistols make excellent close combat accoutrements, and combined with a sword, chain sword of any type of variants that you may have, allow an infantryman to fight with great vigor in the hurly of burly of close quarter combat. Unlike the LAS gun, the LAS pistol does not have multiple fire settings and operates strictly on a single shot mode. Its power pack fits snugly into the pistol grip, or the front of the pistol grip. And due to its reduced size compared to the last gun, it fires, consequently, less shots. Most magazines carry enough charge for around 80 shots before they require recharging. Those soldiers employing the last pistol should be aware that the shots fired towards the end of the power pack's life will, in all likelihood, not be as lethal as the preceding ones. Like most of the LAS weapons, there exist such variations in LAS pistol design, but all perform in the same way. 
Though many officers carry exquisitely adorned last pistols that are priceless heirlooms, and have gone to war with them and their family for generations. Just like mine, that, thankfully, only three of you had the displeasure of seeing. Shotgun! Ah, those of you that like to breach doors and go into buildings, this is your weapon. I see three of you here that have it still. Shotguns! The smooth-bore combat shotgun fires a massive, low-velocity shot, which fragments in flight into a multitude of lethal pieces of spinning metal or plastic. Though the weapon has only a short range, it is exponentially dangerous against unarmored targets. Combat shotguns have magazines and shells that are reloaded by means of pump action. They are strongly made of simple weapons, which makes them idly suited to brave guardsmen who are soon to launch a close-range assault or troops of limited intelligence. Ignore that last sentence. A special feature of the shotgun is its ability to fire different kinds of shells, including solid shells and loose scatter shot, making them ideal weapons for close-quarter fighting, where the experience of putting a foe down is more important than accuracy. Shotguns are often employed by the armsmen aboard vessels of the Imperial Navy, since their low-velocity rounds are unlikely to pierce the hull of a starship, and are ideal for repelling borders. For this reason, Imperial Guardsmen fired should familiarize themselves with the operation of a shotgun, as they will often be called to defend a ship when in transit between war zones. Though shotguns are impressively noisy when fired, they are unlikely to penetrate the armor of anything stronger than flak, or its equivalent, and should only be employed in situations where their advantages outweigh the considerable disadvantages against foes without armor or that scare easily. A shotgun is a desirable weapon, but in most other cases, the guardsman should rely on his trusty las gun when in most combat situations. Ripper Gun The organ Ripper Gun is a drum-fed automatic sh combat shotgun originally developed by the Imperium for issue to organ unit leaders, but now generally issued to all such oversized abhumans. When a Ripper Gun is fired, it unleashes a hail of shot in a defending burst that literally rips its target apart. At short range, its fusillade of fragments produced by the weapon is so dense that the organ literally cannot miss. These weapons are of subtly large dimensions and must be constructed as solidly as possible, for organs have a tendency to use their weapons as clubs when in the thick of fighting. Due to such creatures' limited intelligence, the weapon's trigger mechanism incorporates a burst limiter that prevents the firer from shooting off an entire drum at once. Such a cacophony of sound appeals to the simple mind of the Orgrin and Orc alike, and it detains them immensely, on the occasions when the limiter fails to operate properly. Without the limiter, Orgrin units would very quickly find themselves out of ammunition, though even without bullets, an Orgrin armed with a solid lump of metal is not a foe to be taken lightly. Ripper guns have been designed within the constraints of organ modest intelligence and limitless enthusiasm to be utterly lethal at close range, but are of limited use beyond that. The weapons have only a short range due to the fact that the organ's instincts are for close quarter fighting. Few would feel inclined to shoot at a distant target, even if they carried weapons capable of doing so. The Rough Rider Hunting Lance some of you probably have seen this in the last battle when the Death Corps of Krieg charged the front-lined enemy into a machine-gun pillbox taking on a hill that we were fighting desperately for. Most often recruited from feral worlds, rough riders are frontier soldiers who often ride into battle on the backs of horses or some other manner of steed. They are much valued by many regiments as scouts and forgers, though the power of the Thunder's cavalry charge should not be underestimated, for rough riders often employ explosive hunting lances that are capable of tearing through even the plate armor of an Adeptus Astartes. The lance is tipped with an explosive charge, which blows apart the on impact to shatter armor and melt flesh alike. The hunting lance is essentially a one-shot weapon, and one that, if it fails to kill its target, often leads the wielder out on a limb as they struggle to free a close combat weapon. However, such concerns are generally unwarranted, as the great skill of these riders means very little of survives their first charge. 
though some see Rough Riders as a remnant of a culture long gone. Few can doubt the effectiveness of the weapons, and through the charge and subsequent destruction of their weapon controversies, Department of Torm regulations. Rough Riders are exempt from this regulation under Article 7739-93C, as are demo charge troopers. And here's a quote from legendary mogul Kaima. As there are Rough Rider units and regiments from all across the Imperium, the design of hunting lance also varies enormously with each regiment, favoring their own particular method of detonation. Manual versus impact and design. The Attilian regiments, for example, favor lance heads in the shape of a falcon's beak. These are special variants of las guns that not any of you will probably ever see. These are stormtroopers, scions, and veterans, elite veteran troopers. A hell gun and hell pistol. Stormtroopers of the Imperial Guard are trained and equipped to much higher standards than normal infantrymen, and thus they are trusted with rarer and more specialized equipment than would normally be the case. Though all Imperial Guardsmen represent a finest fighting men and women of their homeworld, it is a fact that some men excel in combat where others merely provide meat and bone. To these exponential men and women, are given more advanced lasguns known as hell guns. Such weapons are trademark of the stormtroopers and fire more intense shots than the more commonly available weapon. Though not as powerful as the hotshot power packs of the long las, the power cells of the hell gun allow for more rapid firing and can be switched between single shot and full auto. Since stormtroopers often undertake the most dangerous mission, it is fitting that they should be equipped with the most best weapon available in large quantities. Though the actual power of the laser bolt fired is commendable to that of a normal las gun, its penetrative power is far greater and can punch through layered armors with ease. The hell pistol, like its smaller cousin, the las pistol, a hell pistol, is simply a smaller version of the hell gun. It is comparable range to the las pistol, but its power pack has a much smaller shot capacity, typically engraving around 40 to 50 shots, depending on the age and condition of the power pack. Many hell pistols are crafted by hand, rather than stamped out of forged temple, and many have glorious histories going back centuries. As might be expected, these are weapons typically owned by officers, though some particularly famous or lauded stone trooper sergeant may have been awarded his hell pistol as a mark of some great heroic action. Such things are not, of course, exponentially rare, and most hell pistols remain properly at the bottom of the tomb unless specified under Article 57332-534F. Next, we'll be talking about the bolt guns and bolt pistols. The bolt gun is the most commonly recognized as the standard weapon of the Adeptus Astartes, and though it is not unknown for certain high-ranking officers to bear such advanced and powerful weaponry, it is incredibly rare. Bolters are most effective weapons than the standard powder and las gun, and are able to punch through the most forms of armor with little or no effort. They are, however, much more complex and are generally only ever carried by stocky individuals of great strength, given that they are incredibly heavy and generate enormous recoil when they fire what is essentially a miniature missile. The explosive rounds fired by bolters are of a much larger caliber than normal bullets, and are sheathed in an armor-piercing tip with a mass-reactive detonator. Though fired at relatively low velocity, the bolt's own propellant soon accelerates, and the round once clear of the barrel, the mass reactive detonator reacts to any sudden increase in local mass and activates the explosive charge, literally blowing the target apart from within. Such weapons have an extremely loud report and create very gory entry and exit wounds in their targets, which inevitably do not survive the trauma of the shot, and thus are perfectly suited to the shock assault role fulfilled by space marines. A bolter can fire a single shot, a four-round burst or fully automatic fire, though without bionic augmentation, it is not recommended that anyone other than if a space marine fires on anything other than the single-shot setting. 
Like most weapons in the Imperium, there are many variants. Bolters are designed to be augmented and can be equipped with a wide variety of modifications, such as optical scoops, combat blades, or even combined with other weapons, such as melted guns, plasma, flamer, grav, or other. Bolt Pistol the bolt pistol is a similar version of the bolt gun and fires exactly the same form of explosive bolt missiles. Senior officers that stationed veterans of the Imperial Guard sometimes carry bolt pistols, and it is a great honor to do so, for only specialized temple forges on Mars or Space Marine homeworlds have the capacity to craft such an advanced weaponry. A guardsman is most likely to see a bolt pistol being carried by commissars at the bottom of the for employment in the field of battle and for sanctioned executions. The magazine of a standard bolt pistol is capable of housing between six and ten rounds of ammunition. The shells fired by a bolt pistol are identical to that of a bolter, and rounds may be freely exchanged between the two weapons without fear of jamming. Bolt pistols are rarely used in the isolation and are most commonly employed with close combat weapons by assault units of the Space Marines. Only the bravest officers of the Imperial Guard, known for leading their men in the thick of fighting, carry such a weapon. The presence of such an inspiring weapon in the hands of a courageous officer, an example of certain to inspire great feats of valor. Grenades. Each guardsman is issued with six fragmentation grenades, often referred to as frags, which are the Imperial Guard's standard anti-personnel device. They are designed to be thrown at the enemy, whereupon they will explode and destroy the target with burst of flying shrapnel. The body of a fragmentation grenade is made of steel and to cause additional injury. The interior of the grenade may also include small metal ball bearings to further ensure crippling wound fragmentation grenades may be used in several ways, as described below. I will read each one. Fragmentation grenades. When assaulting an enemy position, frags will be thrown to keep the heads of the enemy down as they take cover from the blast. In this manner, Imperial Guard assault units may be able to deny the enemies the benefit of cover. Number two. It is also possible to use grenades defensively, as effective casualty radius is greater than the distance most guardsmen can throw it. Each grenade weighs nearly a kilogram, and they may be thrown from behind cover at approaching attackers. Number three. Grenades may be also used as booby traps by removing the pin and leaving them beneath or within items likely to be lifted or thrown by the enemy. See the Imperial Infantryman's Uplifting Primer for most details on setting booby traps using grenades. That will be in another class later. There are three different types of grenades. One is the Diamrod E91 Frag A1802 which is the standard fragmentation variant that almost everyone has. Another one is the Dimkrod E91 Crack A1902 variant, or Crack Grenade, which is mostly for cracking armor, which is where the name came from. Next we have E91 Meltabomb 7102. The Meltabomb is, as it should be known, is the same type of blast that you would get from using a melter gun. Daggers and bayonets. This is also to be talked about with improvised blades and such, which, if I am not mistaken, is the last page that we'll be going through for today's lecture. Here's a quick and simple one. I hope you understand this. And the next one we'll be talking about is effective uses of heavy weapons and special weapons, such as the grenade launcher, sniper rifle, flamer, and las cannon variants, missile launcher, and heavy bolter. We'll be talking about that in the next class. So if you are going to be a heavy weapons team, be prepared to take down notes, because your instructors will actually be drilling you on that later. Daggers and bayonets. Though every Imperial Guardsman is expected to be proficient at marksmanship with a variety of different weapons, it will all sometimes be necessity to fight in close combat with the enemy. Though the butt of the las gun makes for an effective club, it is not the most lethal of weapons, such each Guardsman is issued with a standard pattern. 
better mounted bayonet for close quarter fighting. Many of these bayonets are designed common to the regiment's home world, resulting in some quite fearsome blades, notably those from Katachan, a world that appears to rival the viscousness of the blades. Though some regiments disdain the employment of bayonets, like some that the Department of Torum recommends that all commanders drill, that their soldiers thoroughly in their usage, as training to kill with a blade increases a guardsman's aggressiveness and a possibility of living through close quarters combat. The standard issue bayonet has a matte finish, non reflective blade that is approximately 25 centimeters long and 3 centimeters wide. A sharp point that serrations near the handle help penetrate body armor and even a moderately power thrust will penetrate a flak jacket. The essence of bayonet fighting is to spring forward from a crouching position to thrust the blade into the torso of the enemy warrior. Other acceptable techniques include slashing an enemy diagonally from shoulder to hip bone, or near Zeno's equivalent, and pushing aside his weapon with the edge of bayonet. Edge weapons are also known to be particularly useful for controlling prisoners, if any are desired for interrogations. Stabbing enemies to check whether they are alive or dead instances where a guardsman's power pack is depleted or where he is in close combat with the enemy, firing his last gun is almost impossible. Another thing to keep of note while using your last gun, and I've seen this firsthand myself, is instead of just thrusting it into the enemy and hoping the best to pull it out because sometimes it gets stuck. Maybe you hit a bone, maybe you hit a piece of armor, metal armor, and it's stuck in the jagged pieces. A really good option to do is, just in case they're still alive, after stabbing them, pull the trigger on your last gun, and that will create an air pocket, where at that moment you could swiftly pull the last gun out in that moment and attack the next target. That is been it for today's lecture. Again, thank you all for being here on time for this short lecture. I hope that it was very entertaining and was insightful. The next one we'll be talking about, like I said before, will be special weapons and heavy weapons. When I call your name, you are free to leave. Christoph Iremas, Cesar E. Lopez, Jim and Davidson, Ricky Brown, Matas, Angelo Nicholas, Jaw Sickles, Azuth 89, Thompson 235, Lilac NPC, Ken S, Sagan These Nuts, Fortis Unam, Eldrick Maldred Meltdown 480 The Gay Pussy Eater Coat Coa and Mr. Cospin 123 And for those of you that are sitting in the far back Duel 3 Bard of the Void Biggest Dickies David Killslick Jonathan Rees Nathaniel Hamilton and starboard. Again, I'll be talking with you after class. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs>